Well, French students begin learning about an independent Kurdistan in history lesson. Whoa. 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 What's going on? What's going on? Contemporary <coughs> use of the term refers to the following four areas. Southeastern Turkey. See that? Northern Kurdistan. Pretty big chunk. That is roughly speaking about... Um, I'm going to say somewhere around maybe a fifth or a sixth of the country. Somewhere around there. In terms of the... Uh, the tonnage is regarding land. Northern Syria, I got Syria, Syria, the Syrian Arab Republic. Western Kurdistan. Syrian Kurdistan or Western Kurdistan, often shortened to Rojava, is the area of northern Syria regarded by many Kurds and some regional experts as one of the four parts of Kurdistan. Then you got Northern Iraq, Iraq, officially the Republic of Iraq. Southern Kurdistan, the Kurdish populated region in Northern Iraq. <clears throat> Northern Iraq is considered to be one of the four parts of Kurdistan, which also includes parts of Southeastern Turkey, Northern Syria, and Northwestern Iran. Much of the, you know, some Kurdish nationalist organizations seek to create an independent nation state consisting of some or all of these areas with a Kurdish majority. That's the backdrop of the story that we're going to be talking about here. We're talking about French students begin learning about an independent Kurdistan in history lessons. The response by French President Emmanuel Macron. Here, here we go. The response by French President Emmanuel Macron to Turkish expansion in the Eastern Mediterranean, the Middle East, and elsewhere, and especially with the ongoing genocide against Kurds in Syria and Turkey, is creating opportunities for students. Opportunities for students. Opportunity. Uh, opportunities for students to learn about. Kurdistan, un people sans état le gate. Something like that. I don't know what that means. I just said it. The lessons on Kurdistan will be taught as a nation without a state and concerns the book for history and geography that will be taught to 11th grade students for the 2021 academic year. The text written under the auspices of the French state includes the following. There is the hope that the resistance will give independence to Kurdistan. So they're teaching the ch I love it when you teach children opinion as fact, which we do all the time, but uh, I, I love it when the state teaches children public uh, state policy as fact, po state foreign policy as fact. Love it. Hey nature of the beast, nature of the nation state, my friends. The content of the courses states that the Kurds are the largest peoples in the world without a state with a population of 40 million people. In the French history book, it says Kurds have been fighting for independence for a hundred years, while it is particularly emphasized that the countries that dominate the ter territory of Kurdistan are opposed to these efforts. The role of the Kurdish forces in the elimination of ISIS is then pointed out. Yeah, all right. And by the way, all that's true. The Turkish occupation of northern Syria is mentioned in the book. Oh, well, there I was just going to say Afrin, and there it is. Uh, what, what, what happened in Afrin? Afrin was just minded its own business. Afrin is part of Rojava. It still is. Rojava, I'm with you. One day Afrin will be free and return to Rojava, hopefully. So, not that I'm partisan. I'm not a partisan. I'm not a Rojavan or anything, but I certainly am a Rojavan in spirit in terms of, well, I'm a, I'm a lot of different people groups throughout the world. I'm Somalilander in spirit. I'm Rojavan in spirit. I'm Catalan in spirit. 
yeah, all these types of, I'll just say more uh, consensual minded, independence minded type of uh, groupings. Yes, I totally favor them unabashedly. The Turkish occupation of northern Syria is mentioned. Okay, well, there you mention Afrin, and Afrin is a sad loss. Sad loss, and the whole world gave Turkey permission to invade Afrin. And shortly after Afrin, everybody was like, oh, well, uh, Russia was like, oh, well, Turkey, well, what a surprise. Turkey just went for it there with the whole helicopters and all that, all that stuff. Yeah, okay, well, I'll tell you what. Oh, and then you shut down one of our pilots, and then there was that parading of his dead body, and okay. Gotcha. Totally noted. And then uh, handcuffs went on the Turks, and now the Turks are grinding down. Which uh, I don't. I'm not. Oh, I'm. I'm sad for the individuals. I don't really blame individuals within nation states that are participating in the hoopla of whatever their nation states hoopla is. So I don't. I don't hate the Turks. I don't hate the Turkish troops. I hate the uh, ideological. Well, the, they're not really ideologues. They, they use ideology to, to, to uh, whip people to murder and to die. The Erdogans of the world. Uh, I hate Erdogan. I hate all the people that know what he is and still support him. But I just can't judge most human beings in most nation states for the evils that they participate in regarding their own nation statism, the choices that they have to make pragmatically to live in any kind of sense of the term, and no, no, no. I'm not judging the poors in any lands. I'm not judging the poors in any lands on the main. In March 2018, the Turkish army occupied the Kurdish inhabited city of Afrin in the surrounding area. This area was handed over to radical jihadist groups and this was, it was, it was. So, uh, so, oh, well, here, here's, here's interesting. Here's the questions. I'll leave this part with this part or this article with this. Students are also asked to answer the following questions during the lessons. Is the Kurdish situation the same in all states? Interesting. So that would be Turkey, Iraq, and, uh, Syria. Is independence the only way the Kurds fought in the 20th century? What was the role of the Kurds in the war against the uh, Islamic State against Is? Why can we compare Iraqi Kurds with Syrian Kurds? And then there's issues. It gets a little complicated as we go on. Iraqi Kurdistan president carries conciliatory message from Baghdad to Ankara. See, that's, let's go back here. We've got the Northern Kurdistan. They, this, this region, these people exist as undergrounders, basically. Largely undergrounders under Erdogan's regime. So they have to take on whatever undergrounders do to try to subsist and to try to keep, uh, keep the knowledge of who they are and what they are alive and the people that are they. So... That's their frameworks. And then you've got uh, Western Kurdistan, Rojava. Rojavans are in, used to call, it's, it's called a march. It's uh, M-A-R-C-H-E. I, I always pronounce it marsh, but it's, I think, man, I don't know how it's pronounced, but it's kind of a region that sometimes falls between nation states where, like, nobody really wants to take the responsibility for it. Well, that's kind of where the Rajavans have, have existed here in terms of the region where they were in, where for a significant period of time, it was pretty much chaotic. The only people who could rule there were people with uh, big guns, and and they were able to subdue the land and chase out the Islamists and build a pretty, pretty radical experiment that I regularly talk about on this channel. And their framework is they're not the undergrounders. They're a burgeoning nation, if you will. Burgeon nation state, if you will. Although they're not fundamentally organizing in a way that uh, is, is exactly the same as most nation states around them. But that's another long story. I'm not going to get into that. And then you got Iraq. You got the southern Kurdistanians. And these folks, these cults have have a long history of of coexisting with uh, Iraqis with and very prosperous ways made tons of money they're very capitalistic they're very westernized type uh, in general not completely I mean just 
they're more westernized than the others and they're more capitalistic in nature like the western Kurdistanis you could say they lean on the socialist scale and uh, argue about that whatever way you want but uh, you know they come from socialist traditions at the very least whereas these guys are um, well they, they've embraced capitalism because they've made a lot of money in a lot of ways there's a large but they have a size that at least they I, I imagine they still do have a pretty sizable sophisticated middle class and uh, they're used to living high standard of living and, and so they have very different uh, interests than the, these guys these guys are they're not quite undergrounders but they're still out there on the fringes man they're still fundamentally challenging the system whereas these guys these guys and they've been for a while in a relative safe space where they can coexist with the world around them and they're not really trying to achieve nationhood they just want to space where they can live out their culture and make money so not all Kurdistanis are, are alike and it's largely because I would argue more so because of the circumstances that the folks that live in these different regions found themselves in for various reasons some of them geographical mostly the political circumstances of whichever nation state they found themselves uh, dealing with Iraqi Kurdistan president carries conciliatory message from Baghdad to Ankara this is from Al Monitor details of the unexpected September 4th meeting in Ankara between Turkish President Erdogan and Kurdistani region President Nishir, Nishir, Nishirvan Barzani are beginning to emerge with sources confirming that it was prompted by French President Emmanuel Macron's visit earlier last week to Baghdad so Macron goes to Baghdad <clears throat> and remember then this happens in this story the French students begin learning this is from the Greek City Times and this is two days after after this uh, story that uh, we're talking about here Iranian Turkish deal to fight PKK risks harming stability of Iraq's Kurdish region the PKK and its affiliate Iranian offshoot PJ at PJAC promised to resist expansionist plans by neighboring countries a joint declaration between Iran and Turkey to coordinate efforts to fight armed Kurdish groups in Iraq has provoked alarms in some quarters over feats that an escalation of fighting could further destabilize an already tense region. The 8th September announcement between the two countries could add ca also cause trouble for Iraq's autonomous Kurdistan regional government, KRG, at a time when it is vital in vital negotiations with the central government in Baghdad. So you see all of these, just the nature of this world, by the way, in general, if you're going to look at foreign policy, it is filled with these competing interests and there's just no way for you to just neatly declare, okay, these are my allies. These are my, uh, these are the, uh, the ones that I can coexist with. These are the ones that I must kill. It's like everybody is kind of a mix of coexist and kill in a lot of ways. And even amongst the Kurds, you have the Kurds again under threat of clampdown in Turkey. So you can just take those two contrasts right here. Let's just take this. Just take these two contrasts. We have... Iraqi Kurdistan president carries conciliatory message from Baghdad to Ankara. Kurds again under threat of clampdown in Turkey. So you could see the powder keg that is a united Kurdistan. Just even amongst the Kurds themselves, them finding. I doubt very much, for instance, that Western Kurdistan Rojavans would very much like to submit themselves to the form of... Uh, governance and market structures of southern Kurdistan and vice versa see that's why aren't you showing the map for southern Kurdistan there we go here show it the show it the map here where's the map why aren't you showing it you suck you suck not even showing it that's interesting Iraqi Kurdistan alrighty then Iraqi Kurdistan so uh at any rate, you can see when Macron sees to it to risk that level of... Uh, that's like he's just taking a, a hand grenade and he's just like, boop. 
Yo, yo, everybody, yo, watch this. Boop. And there's a reason for it, of course. And the reason has to do with, uh, let's just do, uh, let's do France, Turkey, Mediterranean. Let's just do that. Let's just do that. France versus Turkey, a showdown in the Middle East is brewing. Turkey, France, close friends despite disagreements, Turkey envoy, Turkish envoy says. I don't know how you're going to feel after this. Turkey says Francis Macron hysterical over Syria, Lib Libya, East Mediterranean. Turkey begins military exercises in northern. Oh my, that is bold. That's two weeks ago. Let's uh, let's see if we can do some. Let's do some past week. What do we got just for the past week? France analysts. It is impossible, France, to not to intervene. Let's see. That's the Greek City Times. But you'll notice it's the Greek City Times again. It is impossible for France not to intervene in a conflict between Greece and Turkey. Yeah, so there's that dynamic as well. This is a whole muddle puddle of stuff, and there's so much. As it so happens, there are multiple knots in in the whole entanglements of dual natures of allies and foes. And one of those knots is Rojava. One of those knots is the gas fields in the eastern Mediterranean. One of those knots is Libya. There are multiple knots where you have multiple superpowers with interests competing with one another. In some instances, like in Syria, you have, uh, depending on which part of the region you're talking about during which part of the fluid civil war for a long period of time, it, you're... The conditions on the ground could change where Hill 12 could find the U.S. and Russia interested in working toward the same goal. And two days later, Hill 12 would be the U.S. and Russia find competing interests. And sometimes Hill 12 finds U.S. and U.S. interests competing. Or sometimes Hill 12 finds Russia and Russia competing, you know, proxy-wise. But these are the levels of breakdowns in clear uh, lineages of diplomacy that we're dealing with, that we're dealing with levels levels 9,000 level 9,000 so I'm just gonna say brace yourselves and, and prepare because uh, thanks to the glory. Oh, here's just a little bit of a little bit of a smattering there. Baghdad ruling deals blow to Kurdistan regions. Gold trade. So then there's that wrinkle, Rudal there. So there's that wrinkle thrown in, and then we've got. Uh, in addition to this, we got this. Now this really hurts me, because I am so fundamentally driven to preserve self-sustaining technologies which you could call primitive technologies i call them self-sustaining technologies we need to preserve the knowledge of how to create when we have to out of nothing and that includes oh essentially i mean mud brick making there is every reason to continue but it is extremely highly portable highly useful highly self-sustaining you do not want to lose this value this is extremely extremely useful I, I want this. I want to be able to do this. I want to own the land where I could actually do this. I could make my mud brick structures. And I mean, they're so, what's so cool about them is when I want to, I could destroy them with ease and, and basically end up recycling them in the end. And I can rebuild anew. And some structures I'll build to last longer, some last less longer, whatever. But mud bricking, mud brick, mud brick. You use mud bricks, and you have you have a home that, in most climates, you could keep relatively cool most times of the year. You lower your dependence on energy just with mud bricks alone. It's it's highly highly practical to keep this skill in here during the dry months from October to June to October every year. The ancient tradition of making mud bricks returns to the plains of the Kurdistan region's capital, Erbil. 
The industry has dwindled over the past 30 years, however, because people rely more on concrete blocks to build households and other kinds of buildings, Ishmael Hassan, who has been working as a mud brick maker for nearly six decades, told Radal. And I'm not going to get into the story, but uh, there you have. And uh, in the links down below, I believe, on the uh, on both the YouTube and the BitChute channel, I don't know which video you're watching, you will find all of the links to all the stories that I talked about in, in this. And... And that's where I'm going to leave this. Good luck uh, trying to figure out that all that. But uh, we report, you decide. Ha <laughs> ha!